Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad than I put my faith in Jesus. He's never
Good morning, church. You guys can grab a seat. Good to see you. How many of you guys were here uh, last weekend, Easter, for any of the services? Anyone here? Thank you. Glad you were here. So uh, it's it's just amazing uh, what God did. And, and, you know, in our meetings this week, we just want to say thank you to all the volunteers. We know so many of you did so many hours making Easter happen. Um, and it's just so cool when, you know, we just see really God showing up. And so uh, last weekend, uh, and, and we, we have four campuses. Most of you guys know that we have here Haymarket, we have Gainesville, we have Warrington, and we have Manassas. It's our newer, newest one uh, that's Spanish-speaking only. And so in all of the uh, services last weekend, uh, God brought 8,235 8, people here to our uh, services over the week. So, which is super cool. And, 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 you know, record numbers for the Warrington campus, for the Gainesville campus, it was just so cool. But even more important than that is at all the services, we had 69 trust in Christ and we had 15 baptisms over last weekend. So that's what it's all about. That's why we, you know, have all the lights and sounds and screens and, and you guys serving is because we want to make sure that we're reaching as many people as we can. So it was just an awesome, awesome weekend. So thank you. And if you're back with us now visiting or if you're online watching, thank you so much. Um, if it is your first time or you've never filled out a, a, a guest card, uh, we've got a, a QR code here. It's also in your notes. We will not spam you. I promise. We just want to make sure that if you have prayer requests, if you if you want to get connected, we're able to do that. So make sure that you uh, you know fill that out, um, and we'd love to uh, follow up with you. Um, and as well, we just want to say thank you so much for your 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 giving. You know, all of us come together and we tithe together and we give together, and it's amazing what God does through our generosity of letting things like last weekend happen. But we do want to say thank you so much. There's ways to do it in here. Again, another QR code. We have two slots, uh, little uh, slots in the doors on the way out if you want to actually physically give. Uh, but we just want to, again, come together as, as a church family and just, you know, continue what he did last week, right, as we keep worshiping, as we keep reaching people. So if you go ahead and stand with me, and I'm going to pray as we're going to go back into uh, some singing. Jesus, thank you so much for um, letting us be here this morning. God, thank you for what you did last weekend. Thank you that it was the celebration of your resurrection, God, which really is the hallmark of our faith, God, that we know that you can resurrect over whatever we're going through. We just thank you so much for what you did for the lives changed last weekend. God, right now, uh, I, I know even as we speak, the Gainesville campus is meeting, the Warrington campus is meeting right now, the same point in the, in the service. God, we just lift them up. We ask you to do life change there at, at all of our campuses. And even here today, God, everyone who's going to be here, this is all about you. And God, be with us. We ask your spirit to guide us as we just keep singing. We ask you to be with Pastor Tim as he's uh, bringing the message today. We give you the rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles in the making, a miracle. 
Jesus, there is no one as powerful and as great and as worthy as you. So Lord Jesus, we just pause in the busyness of this morning right now to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving, giving us the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. That's what your word says. And so, Lord, in the moments that we feel inadequate, in the moments that we don't feel like we can go on, in the moments that we don't feel like we have what it takes, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would remember that you've given us everything that we need for life and godliness. And that we would turn to the name above all names. The Holy Spirit of God who's taken up residence inside of all who believe and that we could remember that we have the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, that we can do all things because you give us the strength, Lord Jesus. You're with us everywhere we go. You never leave us. You're good. You're faithful. You're gracious. You're merciful. You're loving. You're kind. You're compassionate. You show up. You never fail. You never will. You're our firm foundation, our solid rock. And so this morning, Jesus, we say thank you. And we put our hope on the truth of your word and the truth of who you say you are and the truth of who you say we are because of what your son Jesus did, God. Thank you for loving us. We love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we give it up for Jesus in this place? Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Welcome. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Welcome to everybody joining us online as well, too. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I love that worship song. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that one never gets old to me. So um, I love it. Thank you guys for singing it. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I get the chance to speak to you guys today. I'm excited. And uh, it's uh, always uh, an opportunity for me when I get the chance to talk a little bit longer and uh, share with you some thoughts and, and all that stuff. I uh, did want to uh, promote to you, before I jump into things again, uh, our marriage seminar that's going to be going on on April the 20th. It's going to be from 3 to 5 p.m. And I was talking to somebody uh, in between the services as well. And this is not for just like, hey, your marriage is on the rocks right now, like you should come. Like, if your marriage is great, you're invited as well too, okay? Like, what a great way to keep your marriage great by, you know, working on it. There's a thought. That's crazy to think about. But um, would love for you to come out. The, uh, we have child care that's provided. I do have just a, a fine print thing, though, with the child care. If you have the ability to have them with the, your kids with grandparents, maybe, or somebody, you know, we would love that. Just throwing that out there. There's already like 170 kids registered. And um, that's a lot of kids. So... But hey, if you don't have childcare, do not feel bad about it. Bring them in. We're just gonna, you know, release them into the gym or something, and <clears throat> we'll see what happens. So there's padding on the walls on most areas. So, uh, but yeah, we're excited about it, and we hope that you know some of these seminars that we're uh, basically wanting to start doing annually now. Uh, these parenting seminars and marriage seminars are a blessing to you, that they're a benefit to you and your family. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'd love for you to come out. So had a great Easter. A lot of people came out and uh, that was awesome. It's always a blessing, but it's not about the numbers. It's, it's about life change. And we, we hope, really hope that, you know, people have made some amazing decisions for, for Christ and to not only accept him, but uh, maybe to start actually living it out and taking steps towards living out your faith out there in the community. That's important, you know. And, uh, you know, so our goal here with this, uh, it's called The Word, this new series uh, that Barry uh, came up with is really to kind of focus in on Psalm 119, okay. So we're going to be spending a lot of time in Psalm 119. Our goal is for you to get in the Word uh, on a consistent basis, have a better understanding of it, and have a desire to obey the Word. And I know that's not a fun one. But that's what I'm talking about today. So get ready. All right. Um, I think that, uh, man, when you're in the word on a regular basis, sometimes you can be going through so much junk in your life. It's like, it's like the only thing that you can do is just hold on to the promises of God. And that's like the only thing that can get you through sometimes, you know. So if you're not in the word, I think you're really missing out. And so we, what we wanted to do is encourage you to take a little 22-day challenge with us. John Mazingo came up with this. He's, the Gainesville campus is doing this. And this is a real simple challenge, but I think there's power in it, you know. And what we wanted you to do is take the 22-day, 22-section challenge with us. 
okay? And it's very simple. I'll explain it. If you don't know, Psalm 119 is basically broken up into 22 sections because it's broken up into each letter sectioned off with each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Each section is eight verses. So what we wanted you to do is take each morning and just read a section. Eight verses, not life changing, not life cha well, hopefully it would be life changing, but um, not life altering, I meant to say. Um, but here's the deal. You might say, I'll, I'll read the entire chapter, the entire 22 days. That's great. All we're trying to say is like, let's get some reps in. Let's get some consistency in so we start building a habit. Okay, how many of y'all will do that? How many of y'all will say, I'm going to read eight verses to start my morning out. Awesome. And thank you to those who are like, I'm not doing it and not raising your hand. Thank you to, the, thank you, to you guys as well. I love just genuineness, you know. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and so basically what will happen is by the end, uh, that last Sunday that Barry wraps up the series, uh, you would have read the entire thing through each section. So, anyway, title of my message is There's Joy in obedience, okay, and I know that again, it's not uh, very, uh, you know, pop culture friendly to talk about how we should obey the word of God and how we should obey uh, the commandments that the Lord has put in the guidebook that he has given us, you know, but we, we do have this, this incredible book here that has so much power in it that our goal should be as believers and as Christians is to, to want to follow those commands and the things that Jesus has has laid out or that God has laid out for us in his book. And so I, I think guide guideposts and, and things like that are, are a good thing. I'm so thankful like when I look back on my life growing up, my parents, they weren't super strict or over the top or any of that stuff, but they definitely did have some, some guideposts, some parameters up. And I knew there were some no-fly zones. And I knew that if I went in those zones, I was going to be feeling it for a very long time. I was going to get in big trouble. And so I maybe didn't like it so much at the time, uh, but man, I'm so thankful that they had those things in place for me as I, grow, as I grew up. And I see the bigger picture to it all, you know. But that's the same thing that what God has given us in his book. And I think sometimes we are misguided with our relationship with Jesus. And I'm very guilty of this myself. I um, was listening to, and it was just a snippet, so I didn't listen to the whole thing. Uh, so I'll say that, and so I'm not throwing shade at him. But how many guys know Kanye? Kanye West? Anybody know Kanye? I know he's, he struggled with some stuff and gone through a lot and the whole deal. Uh, but, you know, a couple years ago, gave his life to Christ, very outspoken about it, came out with a, you know, Christian rap album, whatever, and very outspoken, living it out big time with his faith. And lately, not so much. Lately, he hasn't really been, you know, kind of so outspoken and he's been off doing his thing. He was being interviewed by somebody and he said, uh, he said, I have my issues with Jesus. He said, I prayed and I didn't see God show up in my family. I didn't see him show up in my business, in my music. And I was just like, you know, personally, again, I didn't watch the whole thing, so maybe he had some explanation as to why he said that. But I was just like, man, that is such a misguided representation of what our relationship is with Christ. You know, we just sang at our night of worship, our Good Friday night of worship. You guys have heard that song, Jesus Paid It All. And then what is the next line? Like, all to him I owe now. Like, he doesn't owe me anything else. It's not a transactional relationship. I'm not in business with Jesus. You know what I mean? I, I, if, if things don't work out the way I think they should work out, what's my goal? Well, my job and my goal is to obey anyway. My goal is to continue to trust anyway. You know, society will tell you the greatest thing that you can do is just be happy. Go out and chase after the thing that makes you happy. So, you know, I don't think it's, it's bad to want to be you know, fulfilled in your job or whatever it is. But I think that we're setting a dangerous precedent for our children when we teach them that all you need to do is go out and chase happiness with everything that you do. There's going to be days that maybe you like what you do, but you're going to be miserable doing it. And if all you're doing is basing your decisions off of your emotions, guess what? Those things are going to change all the time. And I'm talking to people here that I'm assuming you're believers. I'm assuming that your worldview is, is looking at through the lens of Christianity and through uh, Christ. And those are your morals and things like that. 
I would say this, that one of the greatest things that we could teach our children, one of the greatest things that we could do is not chase happiness, but chase obedience in our life. And I think as a byproduct, if we chase obedience, yeah, we can, we can have some happiness, you know. But I think it's a dangerous precedent to just be always chasing what makes me happy all the time. Here's, here's, a, here's a controversial one. Don't be mad at me, okay. But here's the thing. If the thing that makes you happy violates his word, what should you do? You should obey his word. Like three people. Well, obey. You should obey probably. I know. It's not fun. It's not fun, is it? But man, you know what? If the thing that, that I'm doing, that I feel that fulfills my flesh more than anything, violates his word, I should obey his word, shouldn't I? That's the thing that I need. That's the thing that's required for me as a believer, as somebody that's a Jesus follower, as somebody that wants to live my faith out and be obedient to an almighty God who saved me from the pits of hell for crying out loud. So, man, when I looked at this, uh, when I looked at Psalms 119, I just was like, man, I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm going to have to come up here and talk about obedience and everybody's going to be like, great, awesome, yay. You know, but in Psalm 119... The writer goes, joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. And I just put in not my own, that they would reflect your decrees, Lord. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I, as I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. And that's the first section. But I had to throw verse 9 in there. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. And so, very, very high level, very quick overview on things. I know that there's probably a lot of you that can come up and literally give us an entire week seminar on Psalm 119. And then there's probably some of you that have never ever read a verse ever out of Psalm 119. Okay. And so our whole goal is that you start jumping in the word and start getting um, that little situation there taken care of and start getting back in the word on a consistent basis. But you know, brief overview is obviously a lot of people kind of, you know, lump in a lot of the Psalms that David wrote a lot of the Psalms or some of the Psalms. Um, I say that, you know, most scholars agree that this psalm was either written by David uh, and then stuff that I read was either Ezra, Daniel or Jeremiah. And then um, the psalm is written as an acrostic, um, off an alphabetical arrangement off of the Hebrew alphabet. And its focus really is on the joy for us keeping God's law. But really, uh, you know, to take it a step further would be that we're to live a lifestyle that demonstrates obedience to the Lord. You know, and he is a God of order, hence the acrostic structure, not a God of chaos. And so we have a roadmap, we have a blueprint to follow these things, to be able as a, as a guidepost to live our life uh, in a, a moral compass and a moral code. So our salvation is not a thing of like, you know, I heard a pastor say, and the pastor puts out a lot of stuff. So sometimes like pastors get no grace for saying one wrong thing or whatever. Um, but he said, you know, just give God a try. And I, I get what he's saying, but we're not supposed to give God a try. Like it's not a, again, it's not a we're trying this thing out and let's see how this goes kind of deal. We're not dating, you know. <laughs> like we're giving our life over to an almighty God because of his sacrifice for us and what he did on the cross. We just celebrated it. We just talked about it this last weekend. And so our job is to turn Obviously, we're to recognize the fact that we're sinners. We're supposed to recognize the fact that we can't earn our way to salvation. We can't get there on our own. We're, we're you know, uh, imperfect people, okay, and, sin, and sinful people. And our goal is to turn away from that sin and let the old pass away. We become a new creation in Christ, okay? And then from there, the Holy Spirit starts to convict our life. And we should, as believers, have a desire to actually want to dive into the word and to start really getting a conviction over our life on how we should live our life. Like, that's the whole point of it. So at some point, we should start having that desire to want to grow deeper with our faith, to grow deeper with our understanding of Scripture and to want to live up to those types of things. And I get it. We're all imperfect people. We're all, you know, people that are, we're all sinners saved by grace, you know, so we need that grace. But man, one of the things that, uh, one of the commentators um, believed that the author of Psalm 119 was persecuted by people of power and was being ridiculed for his beliefs. And I just want to take a moment with this because 
I, I, I don't know how many of you guys are like this, but I am so guilty at times of like hiding my faith at times. And there's a verse about that and it's not a pretty one. But, you know, man, just for fear, like I wonder what somebody's going to think about me or, or whatever, you know. And man, I wanted to encourage you guys, don't live your life that way. I think I look back on my life and in my 20s, everything that I did, I was so obsessed with like what other people thought about me. And I look back on it and I'm like, it was a mental prison. That's a mental prison to be in when all you do is just dictating all of your actions off of what everybody thinks about you. Hopefully as you get older, you're able to shed those things and you don't care that much anymore, you know. The sad thing is, is when I see people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s still living that way, you know. You don't have to live that way. And I think our, um, our goal um, should really be to, to, to not con be concealing these things, to go out and to be bold uh, for our faith and to go out and uh, be a light to people and everything like that. If nobody knows about it, you know, like what kind of a light are we being out there? Um, where did I lost my step there? I lost my place. Just hang with me. We need like some Jeopardy music if I, if I do that. <clears throat> You know, so yeah, regardless of what, what others think, stay steady, you know. You might, you might not think it, but man, there's going to, if you decide to stand firm in your faith, to go live it out in, in your community, in your workplace, and all that stuff, and not be hiding it or whatever, man, I believe the Lord is going to start working and moving through you. Um, there's joy in that obedience, you know. It seems counterintuitive, but I was trying to find some good statistics. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of information out there that, you know, kids thrive in a structured environment and it seems kind of weird when you actually like I said at the beginning like when you put up these guideposts and and things for kids a lot of times you feel like it, it's it's not the case and you feel like it's oppressive or whatever but man it's actually the complete opposite that kids you know thrive in a structured type of environment with things and there's a lot of deep articles that go into it online but why do we feel like you know as we get older those things are no longer applicable you know, we want to go out and just live our life and do our thing. And again, do whatever like makes us happy and not live under a source of accountability in how we live our life. I believe the Lord gives us his word not to torture us or any of that stuff, but because he loves us. And he knows that if we go out there and try to keep defining our own realities and all that stuff, that it's going to eventually lead to our own demise. Sin seems fun, guys. It seems so fun to just dump, to dump, to jump into sin and to live your life and, and dabble in sin all the times. But it always catches up. At some point, it always catches up. So I truly believe that striving towards um, a life of obedience can bring happiness and fulfillment. And I believe that God, the God of the universe, can begin to use you mightily as a byproduct of it. So a couple quick things here, and then we'll be done. So number one, it takes discipline. I know this is a no-duh statement. It takes discipline to live an obedient life. It takes discipline. It's going to take um, some focus. It's not some walk in the park. It takes some consistency. Okay? But at the same time, man, I love this verse in Hebrews 12. 1. Just, uh, it says God's discipline proves his love um, towards us before it goes into the verses. In, in Hebrews 12. 1, it just says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. It's an endurance. It's, it's a race. It's, it's something that's going to take some grit, you know. But um, man, what, what an amazing thing to, to lean into the truth and the things that he gives us in his word. You know, we're not free to go out and just frame our own version of religion to justify our sin. I know that's a tough one to hear, okay? Because unfortunately today you see a lot of, you know, churches that are watering things down for the sole purpose of just trying to keep people in the seats. And just try to keep the donations up and all that stuff. It's like we're going to water down the truth and not give people the truth um, so that we can keep more people in the seat. Like... That is so counterintuitive to what we're doing here, you know. Guess what's crazy about the truth? The truth offends you sometimes. When you can look in the word and you can see some things that maybe you're not living up to, it can be hard to, that can be a tough pill to swallow. 
Okay? But that's the whole point. You can choose whether to follow the truth or not. You know? Point number two is I would say don't live a compartmentalized life. Don't live a compartmentalized life. And I really got that off of verse three when, um, when the author, I'm trying to find it here really quick. I think I scrolled up too high. Oh, here I am. Verse three says, they do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You know, sometimes we can be the best actors in the world. We, we, again, we come to church, we throw on our, our church hat, and then we leave, and that's it. We leave church in the dust for the next few days. You know what I mean? And I'm guilty of that at times. And so I think that when you live a compartmentalized life, it's like you're trying to, you know, dabble in sin a little bit. You're trying to, you know, kind of do, walk the right path, but then you've got this thing that you, that you hide, that you conceal, Guys, can I tell you, it is exhausting to live your life that way. It is exhausting to live your life that way. And it all, we all know it. It all eventually catches up to us and bites us, you know. Man, I think one of the greatest things we can do, I love Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Man, I would just encourage you to, as believers, let's strive for a life of authenticity. Strive for a life that we're the same person behind closed doors and at home that we are when we're around people, that when we're around church, we're the same person, you know, that there's consistency there. That sin catches up with us, all of us. I wanted to read that verse 9 as well too. Um, how can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I know this is, again, not a... This, it's not a flowery message, so, you know, forgive me, but I think it's necessary. Um, one thing that I would say is young person in here, strive for purity. Strive for purity in your life. You know, follow God's design for intimacy in your life. You know, God has that person that, that um, you know, when you enter into marriage, that, you know, you can be intimate with and all of that kind of stuff, you know. But there's so much peer pressure today to do the counter, to go completely the opposite direction. Maybe you're in a situation where you have been married and, and it's, it, it was a mess and you got burned and you got hurt and all that stuff. Man, strive for purity. Strive for purity in your life, period. Obey the word with that stuff. It's like heavy on my heart because I've got, I've got kids now that are in the, starting to head into the teenage years. And peer pressure is real out there, you know. And so that's why I, I want to encourage you guys. Don't, young person, don't put yourself in a position that makes you vulnerable. Don't put yourself in that position, you know. Strive for purity. And I will say this, uh, when you go and live your faith out a little bit, people subconsciously, I think, expect a little bit more of you at times. And I think sometimes Christians don't like that. I think Christians don't like the accountability. I would say embrace the accountability. Embrace it. You know why? They're looking up to you. Somebody's looking up to you. They have an, a higher expectation of you. That's amazing. I understand I'm in a different perspective here, so I'm going to tell you a story. I will say no story is free from being told on stage. Every, every story can become a sermon example. So, yeah, I'm just putting that out there. Um, so, I again, a lot of you, are, you're not going to be held to the same standard that I have willingly put myself in, okay? Um, however, it's still an applicable story. I... Uh, you know, I love soda and, and, and energy drinks and stuff. Do you guys like soda and energy drinks and different things? It's just not very healthy for you to be like eating that stuff. It's like liquid candy all the time. And so I like seltzer water because like seltzer water is like the thing. It's like it feels like soda, but it's health. there's no sugar in it. You know, does anybody like seltzer water? You guys don't participate much. In this, this. <laughs> the 815 crowd was more responsive than you all are. I'm just telling you all that right now. How many of you guys have heard of liquid death? A few. All right. Somebody whistled over here as well. So, so here's, um, I tried a couple liquid deaths. Again, it's seltzer water. It's not hard seltzer. All right. And I know that everybody has different convictions on alcohol here. But so I go into Harris Teeter up the block, you know, off Heathcote. And I'm in there and they have boxes 
of liquid death. I'm like, oh, they got an orange flavor. I'm going to grab the orange flavor. So I'm walking out in the parking lot, and I see somebody from the church. She may be in here right now. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? And she makes a comment that I bought beer. And I was like, this isn't beer, you know. And at first I was kind of, I was kind of angry. I was like, what? what? I don't drink, you know. And, um, but then I was like, I'm so thankful that she asked because she could have been like trashing me this last week and being like, man, the pastor's got a big alcohol problem. He's like, <laughs> he's, bu he's buying beer like a mile from the church and just walking around with it, you know. I said, no, it, it's seltzer water. And she's like, oh, oh, well, well good for you then, you know. And, <laughs> and again, at first I was kind of like, Wh what, you know. But man, I'm, uh, hold me accountable. I'm fine with that. Like, I understand, you know, what this position is here, and, and I'm fine with that. Like, I'm glass house mentality with that kind of stuff, like 100%. Now, though, I am tempted. I do want to go get, like, some Corona and just start walking around Haymarket. <laughs> Are you offended? Are you offended? Right? But no, I'm so thankful that she asked it, you know, and I have no problem with her asking it. I'm thankful that she did, you know, but it, it was liquid death. It's, it, it does look a little, it does look a little alcoholy. Like, there's skulls on the box. I know, forgive me. And I was drinking them in my office, too, throwing them back, throwing them back in my office. So... You know, embrace the fact that maybe somebody expects or, you know, thinks a little bit more of you and stuff like that. Maybe you won't be held to that kind of standard or whatever. That's okay, you know. Uh, lastly, it's just meditate on the word of, meditating on the word of God just gives you strength. It just gives you strength, man. Strength through temptations. Can you think about, like, man, if the only time you're ever in the word and the only time you're ever praying is when you are here for, like, 45 minutes on a Sunday morning. I say 45 minutes because most of you come late and then you leave early as well too. Because I get it. It's a pain getting out of the parking lot. 45 minutes. I have to, ja I have to put a little jab in there. So. Oh, that's great. I'm joking, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if that's the only bit of communication with the Lord, if that's the only thing that you ever get, can I be honest with you? You are going to get overcome with temptation throughout the week. Because it is an onslaught right now. Okay. Man, meditate on his word daily. It's also strength through your trials. You know, for us to continue to just hold on for dear life sometimes through the trials that we're going through and to just keep trusting no matter what, you know. It was like, you know, Kanye's stuff. He's going through all this stuff. I wanted to be like, why don't you say that kind of remark to Job and see how he would respond to you, you know. So, man, it also gives you strength for just the day-to-day -day living. I will say that, man, like, I feel like lately I've been, I've been consistently in the word every day been praying like crazy every day. I just feel like the Lord has been speaking to me so much lately. It's so refreshing to just feel like, man, God's opening doors. God's do, do, doing things. And you can just sense him moving and working in your life. Guys, I just want to encourage you, man, lean in. I, I hate this statement, lean in. It's like a, such a church thing to say, but lean into his word and, and just that meditating on his word on a daily basis, it will change your life. Have that desire to obey uh, and come up under the authority of scripture. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? A big thing I wanted to say uh, as we wrap here is this, is that I know that um, everybody's kind of running their, a different race right now when it comes to, you know, your, your faith journey and your maturity in Christ and all that stuff. And I understand that maybe some of you all, like myself, have been in church ever since the day you were born. And sometimes you're cold a little bit with your relationship with the Lord. Sometimes you're hot. Um, I know that some of you guys have sin that is gripping your life right now and, and holding on to you and you are struggling to get out of it. So when you hear things like, obey the word and um, all this kind of stuff. It can be like, it can make you angry at times. I just wanted to say like, don't forget the fact that there's grace. Don't forget that there's grace and forgiveness from an almighty God. Don't forget that, that Jesus himself, we just celebrated it last weekend, that he came to this earth, he bled and he died and then he conquered sin and death three days later as well too. For us, 
I heard a statement from uh, John MacArthur one time was talking about kind of like the power of Jesus and his blood and the gospel. And he basically was like, you know, when God sees you, he doesn't see you. If you're a believer, when God sees you, he doesn't see you. Because all he would see is your sin, your faults, the wretchedness that we bring to the table. But when you've accepted Christ into your life, when he looks at you, he sees his son. Because man, we've been bought with a price. We've been covered by the blood. And so if you've never entered into a relationship with the Lord, I would encourage you to do so this morning. If you would like to, if you'd like to give your life over to him, uh, you can do so right now. You don't have to say a prayer out loud or any of that kind of stuff, but you could just say something uh, to yourself uh, just very quickly. You could just uh, say something like this, Lord, I come before you this morning. And God, I know that I need you in my life. And God, I believe you died on a cross and shed your blood. And God, I believe you rose again three days later. God, please come into my heart and save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God, we love you. And uh, just thank you for each and every individual that's in here. And um, God, I know that it can be a tough thing sometimes to just turn from things that are holding us back and, and pulling us, Lord. Uh, and just continue to walk in obedience with you, God. But I pray that we do it. I pray that we can have the faith to do so. Um, I pray that we can just continue to run after you in your presence. Lord, thank you for the price that you paid on the cross. Thank you for the resurrection Sunday as well, too. And uh, God, I just pray that you bless uh, this church. Pray that you bless each and every individual that's in here, Father. And um, we love you, God, so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for listening. And uh, if you accepted Christ today, we'd love for you to grab a bag on your way out of the auditorium. There's some resources in there for you. Our prayer team is up here. Our baptism is open as well, too. Thank you guys so much for being here, being a part of our services. You guys have a great week. We'll see you all.